so consider just product of two lines with, with coordinates t and u and consider rank one trivial bundle and I want to endowed it with a connection the covariant derivative with respect to dt will be dt plus 1 over u and covariant derivative with respect to du will be du minus t to u square uh, this connection is flat and currently constant section is this guy okay and one can generalize to several variables uh, namely uh, consider bundle with fiber cn Ah, it's, it's a meromorphic connection. Sorry? This is meromorphic connection. It has poles at u equal to zero. And then can generalize to several variables. We'll consider rank and bundle on Cn with coordinate t1, tn. Again, product of C with coordinate u. And the connection is given by... Uh, it essentially will be dark kind of some of these examples. It will be uh, kind of the diagonal matrix is only one diagonal and d over du will be du minus one over u square and to get Ah, sorry, it's at place i. It's matrix. Okay. So there's no i in the, in the matrix? Ti. No, no, before yeah. you had i, i. Okay, I see. Uh, when is i? Ah, ah sorry, just uh, say uh, 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 indexes, i, i, yeah. It's place i, i. Okay, place i, i. Yeah, so th this... Uh, um, example of what? Uh, so just give a definition. Uh, an F bundle. Yeah, so it will be F bundles on complex manifold would be is uh, the definition will be analytic vector bundle. H on the product of manifold with line with coordinate u and together with a meromorphic connection which has poles at your variety times point zero in divisor uh, and such that uh, connection is flat say the divisor and uh, then if you uh, uh, consider covering the ratio of u times uh, vector field or uh, maybe some domain in u or let's assume this uh, fine uh, uh, um, you can see the vector fields and it's uh, well defined. Yeah, so if you multiply this by u, there will be no denominator. And the similar in the set, I think it's d of u squared du, also well defined. Okay, that's a very simple notion. And uh, what we have. We have for any point in B, uh, we have a, a map from the tangent space um, to endomorphisms of the fiber at point B0. B0. Uh, and uh, it's given by coefficients of uh, first of the pole.
And it's well defined, uh, if you make gauge transformation, it's, uh, there's no correction term here. It's mm, well defined and similarly, uh, ah, yeah, I get this. Um, yeah, so if you get restriction of vector field at point U, it goes to this operator uh, delta U, see how it acts on restricted to the fiber. It gives you a defined operator on a, on a fiber. And uh, this uh, at flatness of connection implies you get uh, you get family of operations, this all operators commute. Okay, and Uh, now I give uh, a definition. What does it mean that F bundle is maximal if it's kind of like maximally maximal commuting family? So we call it maximal. E for any B. Uh, there exists a vector in the fiber. Uh, such that the following holds. Mm. Uh, such that the following map from the tangent space uh, to, to what? So I get restriction of vector field at my point. So it's point B. So yeah, I'm sorry, sorry. It's point B, yeah. Restriction point vector field of point B goes to operator. And this operator we apply to vector H. So it belongs H. Uh, uh, this operator uh, is isomorphism. And it's obviously open property. If you have, it's called at one point, then you, you choose kind of closed vector nearby, the, uh, you get also isomorphism. Yeah, in, in fact, if you have this maximal uh, vector bundle, that implies that this rank of vector bundle is equal to the dimension of the base. No. Yeah, so get. Um, oops, sorry, maybe I have to repeat briefly. <laughs> That's okay. What I do, uh, so the rank of vector uh, uh, is equal to the base. And in fact, this can be formulated, uh, uh, formulated in different ways, in, in different ways that, that in fact the tangent space has structure is a unital commutative associative algebra. And product I denote by star. And uh, this fiber is a free module of rank one. Yeah. Yeah, so you see that for such family of connections with second and first order pole condition, get freely this algebras and modules, and mm. one can get something. Ah, actually, let's try to see what goes on here. In this case, uh, this multiplication in the example, the multiplication will be the following. DTI multiplied by DTJ is equal to delta IJ. Yeah. Uh, the algebra will be semi-simple. And now, just one uh, uh, little remark. Now one can consider another operator acting on any fiber, namely consider coefficient of u minus of derivative of du. It's again uh, belongs to endomorphism HB0 for any b. You get certain operator. And it also commutes with this 
uh, with, with this algebra, so it should be given by action of one, one kind of unique element of this algebra. Yes. Operators coming from the tangent space. Hence, it coincides with one of them. And, and I'll, I'll put minus sign. I said it will be multiplication by some vector. Uh, element of u minus square or u minus one? U minus two. Because for d uh, du, du, I get Paul's second order. So here in the definition, do you want h to be non-zero? I mean, I Ah, it's optimal. Yeah, if, if my manifold, if it's want to be isomorphism. Oh, you want that map to be? Isomorphism, yeah, that's. Ah, oh, sorry, I, <coughs> I missed that. Yeah, that's the main point, yeah. Yeah, yeah okay, exactly, that's what I'm wondering. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and in this case, you get, uh, you get so you get some some something called Euler vector field, and you, you if you look on this example on this formula, you get some more T i d t i, so it's really look like looks like Euler vector field in coordinate space. So what is the algebraic structure on T b b now? Sorry. So what is the, so T b b becomes a unital commute of associative algebra. Right. But what is the structure? Is it yeah, because uh, you get family of operators, you take product of two of them, that will be equal to one of them, yeah. Okay, I see. I see. Yeah. Okay. One is to check, but it's a small verification, it's something that commutes with all the operators. Yes, 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 yeah, yeah. Like I claim that existence of this cyclic vector, which gives the isomorphism, is exactly equivalent to this condition. It's just a little exercise in linear algebra, yeah. Yeah, so get uh, this vector field, and this is actually mm. yeah. So, so that's the whole uh, notion, and maybe I can tell you that. You. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Now, so it's uh, so it's fine notion. In fact, uh, I will explain later, not in today lecture, next lectures, that it's arise in many many equations in mathematics, such such things. Not only on like complete invariance, which you'll see in a moment. And uh, I just want to say that there are. Yeah. Does it determine? Uh, such a connection, but just put it. No, 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 no. No, if you have this, uh, if you get this uh, algebra and multiplication, you don't have flat connection. So flat connection is little extra data here. You should. Yeah. So, sorry, what is this notation? E, U, B? I, I'm, I'm Multiply by, it's operator multiplication by U, 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 B in this algebra. Oh, oh I see, I see. Uh, or action, uh, or action, whatever, action. Not multiplication. Uh, so the basis of algebra, the fiber is a module. Yeah. Why you take minus? Minus ah, because here I get nicer formula. But also there is a, a, a kind of fact which I will not use, but it's uh, really funny. You can you can uh, raise these things to arbitrary power. Yeah. In commutative algebra, can raise to any uh, uh, powers, and uh, if you take commutator, you get n two minus a one. So you get exactly ac action of al the algebra vector field, polynomial vector field on a line. Yeah. So e power n, if you raise to power n, you get tn to power ti to power n. 
Yeah, so good. Mm. Yeah, you mean you raise to the power in this algebra? Yes, 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 yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah, so the whole story uh, I just explained for complex manifold, but have uh, plenty of kind of uh, modifications. Uh, one can replace. First, we can replace CU by 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 germ of disk. So, so in terms of algebra, we can see the algebra of uh, uh, analytic germ at u equals zero, or by formal germ. Uh, also, we can mm, speak about super manifolds and super vector bundles. And but if you do it with a germ, just C of U, yeah. then uh, because you have a flat connection. Yeah, yeah in complex case, it's, it's, it's the same as, as had to have C. It's, it, yeah, it looks like it's really no, no, no gain in this case. But now what one can do, uh, there are kind of two versions which I, uh, I, I, can, uh, I can explain. Uh, in formal general, cannot do it. Yeah, f uh, one can replace C by any field of characteristic zero. And consider uh, B will be a smooth, maybe formal scheme. Formal scheme. So something like the completion. Yeah, like formal power series. Yeah. Long, uh, long. Yeah, yeah. Polynomial and formal variables, both. That is. And u will be formal. Yeah. And we get multiplied by spec formal of k of u. And finally, uh, one can consider the case when case uh, non-Archimedean field. Again, characteristic zero, and then we can. It could be like periodic number, so series and non-variable. And um, here one can put germs. Again, one can put germs or formal uh, to equal to zero or formal uh, to zero. Yeah. So, so in non-Archimedean case. Uh, Germ in the whole space has a different story. You cannot extend the connection. And in um, also there is a kind of interesting difference. Uh, in, in, uh, like if in the case of a point, if you consider this connection of formal uh, disk is, is kind of expect ex extended to a germ, but all complex numbers. Uh, the extension is not unique related to, no sh to Stokes phenomena. Yeah, so it's there are various. Uh, kind of versions here. And there is. We also consider algebraic, if you consider algebraic variety and algebraic connection and cross on the variety cross uh, G or cross C. Oh, cross line, yeah. The line, then of, of course at infinity it could have regular... Yes, 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 uh, no, I, I, I will, will better not do it, yeah. yeah. In, in fact, in, mostly I consider it like germs or formal, or, or formal germs, yeah. yeah. Because you have e to the power minus t by u, that will make that non-algebraic. Yeah, no, no, definitely for the, the connection is... Uh, have not irregular singularities, yeah. Yeah, and then there is uh, a decomposition theorem. Yeah, we consider an analytic F bundle. Uh, again, on one of two cases, complex numbers on non-Archimedean uh, case, uh, and along U direction, we also can get both choices. You can make either series or germs. Uh, uh, then the story is the following. If you have a point 
P in the base, uh, such and collection and collection of disjoint disks, joint open disks. Uh, so that union contains a spectrum of my operator EU at some point. Then it's open conditions. The spectrum will contain the union of operators in nearby points. And then we have a decomposition of tangent bundle near U is, yeah, we consider just uh, near, near point B. We consider some point B prime close to B is canonically split to sum of pieces corresponding to, to disks. You can see the uh, generalized subspaces where eigenvalues lies in the disk. And the claim that what you get, you get commuting integrable commuting foliations. And what you get, you get mm. the whole story will, will be product over, over these disks, uh, the manifold and the bundles, uh, with a uh, small caveat. Look, we get product structure with a small caveat, just in. If my field is complex numbers and consider germs of analytic functions, the manifold will be the product, but the bundle will be not product. Uh, but if you replace by form power things, you, you get product, yeah. So bundle will be, will be not sum of bundles. No, one can make product of such guys. You take product of two varieties and take sum of pullbacks of products of bundles. So on this bundle, this notion of kind of like product, external product. Ah, okay. So you can take if you have f bundle on different c on the product, you get another f bundle. Yes, yes, yeah. And it will be again maximal if the guys are maximal. Yes, but but you say that when k is c, this product decomposition. And pr uh, k is c, and when consider germs of uh, in u direction will be actual germs, uh, then it will be not a product. But if you go to form power series, it will be product. Ah, so the product structure is only formal. Only formal, yeah, yeah. So this is the Stokes. Yeah, the Stokes phenomenon, yeah, yeah. So here T B prime, right? On the left side is should it be T B prime? prime, yeah, yeah. sorry, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so get this uh, simple little notion and uh 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 uh, composition is it global or whole type? No, it's in an in, in open neighborhood. neighborhood. On the same neighborhood, yeah. Okay, exactly. yeah. Exactly. So, but if you are in the non Archimedean case and you use either rigid analytic or Berkowitz or other expenses, there are many not points which are not. Yeah, I, ca I can see the closed points. I can see the neighborhood of the closed points and I don't have. Yeah, okay, then. Yeah, then there'll be no trouble. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, why introduce this notion? Uh, in fact, in, in the ground fitting series, there is, uh, the, uh, there is some kind of. Uh, there are many ways to formulate it. People, in people, uh, say Frobenius manifold, but it's not. Yeah, it's kind of very close to notion of Frobenius manifold. And there is some uh, language of giving tal cones and some infinite dimensional spaces, uh, which is. Um, and this thing is kind of. Actually, equivalent to the notion of giving tal cone at uh, expanded some point, but it's a really finite dimensional notion, much easier to deal with. So, this decomposition is not canonical. Canonical. Oh, it is canonical. Canonical, yeah. But last time you said that the choice of disk matters. Oh, no, it depends on the choice of disks. Huh, okay, okay. For any choice of disk, right. I get so, a problem. So yeah. You are fixing a choice of disks. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. yeah so now, I'll explain how F bundles come from Gromov-Witten theory. Yeah, it will be. Uh, yeah, so I again fix 
now small field small k again for acoustic zero and smooth projective variety of this field, not necessarily connected. And uh, for a moment, I assume that my field is algebraically closed. I will s t tell you uh, later what to do for an algebraically closed ca case. Yeah, so uh, uh, so I have algebraic closed field and Grom Witten invariance, as I started to explain last lecture, is associated with any integer number and for any class in what consider Cho group of one dimensional cycles, so next up to algebraic equivalence. And then it produce certain class E and beta which belongs to Cho group uh, of x to the power n of certain dimension, uh, 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 cycle of certain dimension, and dimension is n plus d x minus 3 plus pairing of first chain class with beta. Uh, and uh, and this thinks up to torsion, but no equivalence here. Yeah, so it's kind of very fine information. And I will replace by kind of rough version. Now beta will be in again show one of x. But uh, now more doubt by cohomological equivalence. Algebraic equivalence, it uh, belongs to kind of two cycles belong to connected family parameterized by curve. But cohomological equivalence is just image. So you take C1 of the tangent bundle of x of. Uh, t sorry, Tx, sorry. Yeah. Sorry, let us mix up in my head, okay. Yeah. It's image of what? Of you can see image of Cho group to say the ramp homology. Just for definiteness, it does matter which one. Uh, so you in particular, you... I'll kill torsion, yeah. Yeah, yeah so it will be free the module of finite rank. And this i and beta will be, for me, element of the Following things will be Cho delta xn up to cohomological, now cohomological equivalent multiplied by q, and it will be free q module of finite rank. Yeah, so in general, these things are huge, but they're replaced by uh, kind of smaller uh, rough version. So you take the sum of all... Yes, yes, yeah, it's kind of different betas, yeah, different, yeah. Take the sum of all the betas that go to the same... Yes, yes, yes. You yes, you take this guy, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so what is the definition? Uh, definition of these things? Uh, yes, uh, yeah, uh, I'll just, will, will be very brief. You. Uh, I introduce uh, M0 and B, it's, it will be uh, st uh, stuck classifying what uh, you have a uh, curve with n mark point and map to X. This is, this is a connected curve of uh, arithmetic genus zero with nodal singularity. So it's actually a tree of rational curves. And uh, mark points are distinct mark points uh, outside of nodes. And phi is a map. Uh, 
with a relative stability condition. And the stability condition is which is the following. When we consider automorphism group of this whole data, it's finite, yeah. It's finite, or, or equivalently, it means the following. Uh, my curve is a union of irreducible components. If uh, I have some irreducible component is point, then number of uh, nodal points in C alpha plus number of marked points is at least three. So if there is a node, it counts as twice, or no, no. If it's uh, have intersection with other point, I don't know, it count once. If it is like this, no, no. Uh, then it's not zero zero. Ah, then it is zero zero. Okay, okay, okay. okay. The number of nodal ah nodal so of zero zero. You have less. You have less. Okay. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. Is, it, is that the sum of the fundamental classes goes so to beta? Ah, in some fundamental classes, yeah, and f yeah, sorry, in phi of c is equal to beta. Yeah, ah, right. Yeah, so you get this. Uh, this. Uh, sorry? This equality is beta, you consider modulo algebraic equivalence or modulo Yeah, it's like in this. Uh, uh, yeah, we can do here, one can do here, it's, it's you like, yeah. yeah. Mm. Uh, and uh, what, uh, what is known about the space? This, this guy is uh, proper Billy Mumford stack. So stabilizes a finite group, as you see. Uh, and also it uh, carries something called perfect abstraction theory. theory of dimension de delta. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I'm not going to talk much about it. It's uh, uh, natural deformation complex has two terms, uh, deformations and abstractions. There's also no other terms here. And difference between deformations and abstractions is, is delta. Or uh, locally, uh, this, uh, these things can be represented as uh, uh, kind of the following things as yes, intersection of two uh, manifolds where u1, y1, y2 are uh, smooth submanifolds in a manifold in some another manifold and such that dimension of y1 plus dimension of y2 minus dimension of y is equal to delta. And uh, you can imagine if you move a little bit just the submanifolds, you get inter transversal intersection. And the, the whole, there are many approaches to this, and this situation can define virtual fundamental class. Uh, virtual, which belongs to a Cho group with index delta of these things, and you treat it as stack or coarse uh, variety with rational coefficients. And then consider direct image E and beta. It's also a separated the Lin Mumford. Ah, Porter. Yeah. Porter, okay. Yeah. So there is a Kilmore core space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The image of this. Under natural evaluation map, uh, when you get a uh, curve and mark points and map phi, go to images of marked points. Okay. So, I, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but. So you are defining that locally this is type H y one intersection y two. So yeah. Is that what this meaning perfect? It's kind of meaning, yeah. Uh, locally, you can find the model up to certain stabilization. I see. 
and why one and why and what is why here? Why is some mm. bigger? It's some huge things. So it depends on you kind of start to describe things more concretely and it's dip, it dip, finite dimensional. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So locally, you mean uh, up to because locally there is also something like quotient by a finite group. Yes, yes. Uh, up to yeah, up to uh, maybe up to finite group. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, there was two things maybe in doubt with action of finite group and we model out by this. Uh, yeah, so, the, uh, so you get this uh, classes. Maybe I don't need it anymore. So this perfect obstruction to, I mean, do you take the stack itself or some derived version to get the right, I mean? It doesn't, uh, yeah, there are many versions. All the stacks can be described as derived stack and then, the, yeah, yeah. I describe as a usual stack, but there is also a derived stack underlying it. Obstruction theory is not the cotangent complex of the stack, it is something else. Yeah. Uh, Mm. Yeah, in, fa in fact, if uh, the modern language, if you use derived uh, algebraic geometry, this thing automatically comes with derived structure, and there is natural uh, virtual fundamental class over actual like coarse variety you have here. Okay. Mm. So, uh, what are properties of all this thing? Yeah, so there are several properties. Uh, yeah. Yeah, obviously you see that if the uh, sink is not zero, then beta is a class of effective one cycle. Yeah, it's kind of obvious uh, from the definition. Yeah, but uh, but if you forget the construction, that we should kind of like postulate it. Uh, the second story: if beta is equal to zero, and a and b zero is non zero, then n equal to three, and this guy is image uh, of x on the diagonal embedding. And uh, that's again follows uh, from the construction because when can still stable maps of Degree zero, uh, uh, the reason is the following: this m zero n x zero is just a product x times m zero n bar. You have a stable curve with um, n marked points mapped to a point, and for n equals three, this is a point, and then you can see that you get what you want. But for n bigger than three, the space is not empty, uh, not trivial, yeah, but the image of fundamental class will be trivial because you can you kind of project this m04 some higher dimensional variety to a point and you uh, kill the, um, so the, you map to something of small dimension so so the image is zero so you are requiring this that i get beta to be non zero for f bundles to exist I, I'm no 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 i just describe property of the things i see i see describe properties of this i and beta nothing else yeah second story it's This class is same invariance, which is so uh, n is at least three by the stability. I mean, if you want, sorry, because uh, you have a stability called you. No, uh, for n n zero n zero for the n zero one and two such thing is empty, by definition, because then I'll have a map to point with less than three points. It's, it's not allowed. Yeah. yeah. 
Now then we see that the guys is invariant. Uh, and then there are two things. One will like unit axiom and divisor axiom. Axiom from periods uh, when it was uh, not the theorem. Um, so here I, I want to introduce some notation. Uh, just to save a chalk. Uh, if I have uh, I have class uh, uh, in in show group with some two indices. You get kind of like homology class and get cohomology class and show upper star x to power m. Uh, so it's again show group, but uh, the syntax will be co dimension instead of dimension. Uh, then I, it's called, I know, like, like VPC. Then I, I, I say that integral of VPC along m uh, directions. Uh, will be element in each group of xn, xn, and given by the following definition. Uh, so what should I do? I consider a pullback of psi. Uh, your one is called phi. Yeah, homology class was another psi, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, it's it's not really good notation, but uh, what what I do? I take pullback of my uh, cohomology class here to n plus m points, then which uh, act on phi, and consider direct image. So your, your indices, your uh, cohomology class in x to m. It's cohomology class. It's homology class. Yeah. Sorry, I, I, I kind of integrate over last m indices. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's a of correspondence. Sorry. So you see your your, your phi as a correspondence yeah. between uh, x n and x m. Sorry. You see your phi as a correspondence between x. Yeah, yeah. Okay. M and your let it act. Yeah. Okay. Whatever. Yeah. Um. Uh, so the unit axiom is the following for any n greater than zero and b not equal to zero uh, if i integrate uh, mm, of this guy of the last and uh, for the last variable i integrate uh, uh, one in x which is element in a show group Zero of x, then I get zero. Oh, in plain terms. Uh, I, can I, so the Psi divided by what is that term? Uh, 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 ah, here it will be uh, integration along uh, kind of uh, m uh, factors. Ah, okay. So this is like cut product. Yeah, it's yeah. Yeah, yeah. I integrate along one factor. And can, can you say again this formula, Marcin? Yeah. Your indices x n plus m is below upper. Oh, sorry. Yeah, it's because I, because it's thinking. <laughs> You're right. Yeah. Yeah, because I think you cover show groups. Yes. Sorry, it makes sense. Yeah. 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 Along x to power one. Yeah. So it's element i in, in i and m and bit uh, in in show x to power n, or kind of in plain terms, I can say that if considered direct image, it's unit axiom and divisor axiom also just in the same, the same assumption. If you integrate over the last point, uh, uh, first chain class of some line bundle, 
or it just any element in Q1, in fact. But iron beta lives on the nth power, so how can you have x n plus 1 to x n lowest power of this? Uh, n plus, sorry, n plus 1, yeah. yeah. Completely right, yeah. Yeah. Also along, you integrate along x1 is equal not uh, zero but the following six. It will be class e i and beta multiplied by integer number, which is integral of beta, which is integer number. So it's again two x n. And the last is what's called WDVV equation. So it's a union axiom is a special case of the divisor axiom? No, no, it's two different axioms. I, I put, put element in Cho zero and put element in Cho one. is WDVV equation. WDVV equation, equation says the following. For any n greater equal 4 and for any beta, you do the following. You take sum over decomposition of beta into sum of two effective classes. Then you decompose uh, set of indices from 5 to n, uh, except the first four, in the joint union of two subsets. So what was this L? Sorry, I'm sorry to bother you. Wait. L, any line bundle. Oh, so any line bundle on the modulized type? On x. Oh, on x. Oh, oh modulated element in the Cho group. Right. Oh, okay. Just the same stuff. Yeah. Uh, what you do? Ah, just before going on, I, I just want to say that uh, we have this notion of invariance. Then we can speak. Uh, it means that we can replace index n by arbitrary finite set. We just enumerate the set and uh, apply this as an equivalent section. Uh, and what you do? You integrate over the following things. You consider i, and now my index set will be uh, Um, uh, what do you do? You consider uh, uh, mar uh, curves with marked points. And mark points are labeled 1, 2, then elements of set G1, and then extra element which are called left, just word left, and then multiply by the same thing with 3, 4, union G2, union right. And I integrate over uh, what class I consider uh, diagonal embedding. And here it will be like ind indices will be left and right. So integrate over uh, a long x square. So altogether I get something like n plus uh, whatever. This thing uh, sits in show group of 
x to the power n plus 2, and I force this to point coincide. And the claim that things coincide with the same story when I, rep I put 1, 3, 2, 4. I make. You are taking 5, 6, n. Yeah, 5 to n. Yeah, 5 to n. Okay. 5 to n, yeah. So Mm. So, um, uh, what is the meaning of this uh, uh, property? Uh, ah, you can see the uh, this stable maps with n plus four, n plus uh, with n points. So, what is the so you consider the sum of of all decompositions? And this is uh, 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 the element, uh, this what I get here, I get element in Cho group with certain index of x to power n. Is rational coefficient. Again, up to. You have i cross the other i. No, I don't know. Yes. What, do, what does it mean? You have those two sets. Finite sets. I with index. Ah, the, the, okay, so those are classes in different powers. In different powers, yeah. Altogether, it will be an n plus 2 power. Yes, ah. and then you. Want and then I uh, intersect with diagonal in x square, I get class in x to power n. You intersect with the diagonal and integrate over the, yeah. the diagonal. Yeah, then I get class here. And okay, then you get something in chow x to the n q. Yeah. And then I claim that this, this class is the same if I intersect the role of numbers two and three. Of indexes two and three. Oh, one, so one factor two. Ah, beta two, yeah, beta two, yeah, sorry. If you exchange two and three. Mm-hmm. Mm. And uh, so this is the decomposition theorem. No, no, no. It's not decomposition. It's a WDVB equation. It's, this is WDVB equation. And uh, what is the meaning of it? You consider uh, uh, stable maps of certain points such a cross ratio for points one, two, three, four. It's given. It's a given number. And this class, uh, uh, if. If you uh, say the cross ratio equal to zero, you get one side. Cross ratio equal to infinity, whatever is equal to another side. W what is the cross ratio? Again? Ah, because you have map from m zero n bar x beta. There is a map to m zero four with, with anything. You you forget all four points except first four, and contract uh, non-stable components. You get. Yeah, so you get mapped to P1, and we will call it cross ratio <laughs> of this uh, uh, of this point. And but then this stability condition will be lost. Lost, yeah, but you can uh, contract still get some stable curve uh, with, uh, with four points, yeah. Yeah, so it's well-defined map, you get a well-defined map. Yeah. So what is the, the role of this map in this equation? Ah, no, no, if, if, if you can consider pullback of point zero, you essentially get this guy. Uh, this, uh, it means that your curve uh, should be some node decomposed curve in two components. When you get one and two. So you are saying m04 bar is actually p1 for yes. any x? It's not x. It's just m04 bar with usual stable uh, dilemma for. Ah, okay. I see. Yeah. I see. Okay, okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. So uh, so I described the, the whole story. Uh, uh, and I started uh, already removed. I assume that my filters algebraically closed, yeah? 
So we can ask what to do for uh, if uh, for for non-algebraic closed fields. The answer: do nothing. Yeah, uh, nothing. What we get? Uh, uh, just if you, if the my variety is defined over non algebraic whole things, the all the whole this correction uh, and beta uh, connection is just Galois Q bar or Q covariant. So this Galois group acts on betas and also acts on the Cho groups for algebraic closed variety, and and that's that's the only thing which you can say. So it will be just property of theory in algebraic after making passing to algebraic closure. So beta is the, in the Chow class, right? Yeah, Chow, yeah. But you took at some point its image in the Durham. Yeah, I can see the image in Durham cohomology. Yeah. You are taking the image in the Durham cohomology. Yes, 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 yes. I can see the rough version. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, maybe I want to. Yeah, so have this whole properties, uh, and maybe just before ma making small break, I, I'll explain how uh, this group invariant theory gives some kind of this f bond. Garam cohomology after going to the algebraic closure or, or no, no, bef uh, no, no. Uh, I, I do things of algebraic closed fields. And then, uh, then Galo. Galo. Okay, so of course you can use, you can go to integral cohomology instead of of a yeah. yeah. But see, if the proofs are algebraic, sufficiently algebraic, then you don't have to do it. Then you should be able to treat. Uh, Sorry. If the arguments for those equations are sufficiently algebraic, yeah. then you don't need to go to to identify cohomology to go to the Ram cohomology. Maybe I don't. No, no, I, I won't. I won't. I won't really to identify this. No, I said that I do this rough version. One can do a finer version, but uh, for what I explain, it's not relevant. So, so far, you are really taking its image in the Garam command. Yes, yes, yeah. In particular, I kill all torsion, which I have here. Yeah, and. You, you did this rough version in kind of two places, right? Your beta be Both, both. In, 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 yes. Yeah. Well, you could decouple that, I mean. No, I, I want to, to have both of them, yeah. It's important both be rough. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, so what I claim is that Grom Peter theory invariance gives you uh, maximal logarithmic F bundle. Yeah, logarithmic is another version which I uh, di didn't mention here, but um, mm, uh, you will see it in, in a second. And over formal, so the base will be formal base B. It will be the spectrum of some algebra form power series over some field K, capital K, which is another word, K, and K will be uh, 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 coefficient ring of your some very cohomology theory. Logarithmic means the pole is logarithmic? No, 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 I, you will see in a second. Ba base has logarithmic structure, it has some divisor with a normal crossing. Okay. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, it will give have the RAM. When you invert your field to C, or you can see the elliptic numbers. You can see the H et al. X. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah so, so what you what you do? Uh, I'll write not totally canonical thing, but uh, explain that it's, it's really ir irrelevant. You make some little choice, just for concreteness. You choose uh, some 
uh, finite collection, non-empty connection of ample uh, uh, which are classes in uh, uh, two one up to uh, cohomological equivalents, uh, which are a kind of neuron severity group, which are uh, 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 first classes of ample line bundles, and linearly independent of a Q in this two group. So you get this uh, uh, some uh, collection of ample classes, and also choose a splitting. Bet ah, it's, it's beta cohomology. Uh, it's, uh, okay, it's cohomology of uh, uh, what's called it's, it's usual cohomology of complex yeah, single cohomology. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, you, you make a splitting, namely, you choose your cohomology series of a variety, one of this cohomology series, say, and uh, take a splitting plus uh, some other classes, it uh, will be graded subspace. So it can, can contain second commodity class, which you don't uh, cover by this omega, omega a, uh, and grade subspace, and, and plus also choose a basis, graded basis, delta j of this other subspace. Uh, so uh, when you make this together, you see that omega i and delta j form a basis of all cohomology group. You mean of H two of H? Other, sorry, no basis of ev of of everything. Oh, graded basis. Of graded basis, yeah. But some of the delta j's will be in degree two, or yeah, some delta j could be in degree two, yeah. So you are taking omega i; it's a basis of chow one. No, no, it's a basis of chow. It's elements of chow one, but which are basis of chow one uh, mod, uh, multiplied by rational number. Not a basis. It's some some linear independent vectors. I see, I see. It's not a basis. Yeah, it's so chow one divided by the cohomological equivalents. Yeah, yeah, which is yeah, which is some uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so what will be this variety B? It will be a spectrum of uh, algebra of form power series. We're going to get variables qi corresponding to omega i and variables tj, maybe i from 1 to m, and variables tj corresponding to this delta. And variables will be even and odd depending on. Purity of the class. So if it is odd, you just take exterior algebra. Yes, yeah, it will be exterior algebra. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. So it will be a super. Yeah, super, super. It will be super manifold. Yeah, yeah, super form manifold. Yeah. Mm. So it's actually uh, has uh, lo lo it's log uh, has structural log scheme, and also the log tangent bundle. It will be generated by. Uh, vector fields Q, DQ, and DUTJ. And mm, yeah, and if, if you uh, make these things, you, this, this vector log tangent bundle, it, it, may, it, uh, it should be identified with a trivial. T uh, 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 trivial bundle with fiber H, uh, this QDI goes to omega I and this goes to delta J. Uh, so now you are taking B to with this space. Sorry? So you are taking B to with this space now. This space, yeah, this space, yeah. Uh, uh, um, 
Now I'll describe what is a quantum product. On a fiber H is not related to cohomology, or it is. It's, it's just cohomology X, yeah. Ah, fiber will be exactly the cohomology of X, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, uh, just a second. Uh, I, before I defi define the whole things, I, I do something. Before I don't do bundle, I just want to say that I have uh, mm, quantum product will be product on OB linear product, product on homology of X multiply OB, yeah. Uh, which we uh, eventually can send this product not just bundle, but I just give the multiplication on comol depending on, on point on the base, roughly, and multi product is the following. If I take two comol classes, then I get usual product plus sum over all beta not equal to zero effective classes. And then I take product over qi times integral over beta omega i. Here we get automatically po strictly positive numbers because uh, my curve is uh, class of curve is non-zero and beta omega i is ample. And then multiply by the following guy: sum of n greater than zero, one over n factorial. And I, the last time I use this, my stupid notation, I, I consider a m m m model stack of stable maps with, with n plus three points. And, and I integrate over n plus two points. Yeah, so you get class in uh, a multi class of X. And uh, this, uh, this axiomatic implies that this associative unital product. It's, uh, uh, so there was something a long time ago, I think Marvin or other people did quantum cohomology. Is it, is it the same? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The people, yeah, so it's a really stupid name. It's people called quantum cohomology. It's the same space, it's just quantum multiplication. This is what was in there. Yes, yes, that's what's quantum cohomology. Yeah, in fact, it's usual cohomology, but with new product depending on parameters. It's a deformation of a usual cup product. And so that's the usual genus zero quantum cohomology, right? Genus zero, yeah, genus zero. Yeah, yes, yes. There's no small quantum. No, not small. It's uh, no, I think it's big, maybe. Yeah. No, no, it's not small. No, no, I mean, in the sense that it's only genus zero. Ah, genus zero, yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah, and maybe I'll just be write a couple of points. And now I have to write what is the connection on trivial bundle on uh, B cross this spec formal K of U with fiber comology of X my comology theory and uh, 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 the connection is given by the following formula Maxine, you said you said it's a product on this tensor product. Uh, you mean completed tensor product? Or? No, it's finite dimensional space. Uh, wait, uh, Comol of X is finite dimensional right. space. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, 
yeah, so using this quantum multiplication, I define the connection. Degree is gradient operator, uh, dim is dimension of manifold, and U is this Euler field which I have to uh, define to you. Uh, so U is uh, first chain class plus uh, uh, And here it's different story. Consider dimension of x uh, minus uh, two of x, but now I apply it to uh, and this belongs to commodity of x multiplied by O B. So <laughs> this B is your this B this sorry? This B you are describing is that being. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. Or it's a more general being. Sorry? Here, this B. It's the same. It's the same, yeah. I, I just introduced here. I don't know what you're talking about, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. So it's, uh, yeah, so it, it describes an element on, on cohomology, but you un understand it's is a, a log tangent vector. log tangent bundle is generated by these guys we identified with cohomology. Okay, so, uh, and uh, all this axiomatics, all this axioms implies that everything is fine here. We get this maximum left bundle, and now I make a little break for five minutes, maybe. Yeah. yeah, so, yeah, so we get, uh, in this way, this formal I uh, think the most, uh, of course, this choice of uh, uh, basis is almost uh, harmless here, but there is still something. We choose some number of ample classes, not could be, they could generate all uh, ample con or not generate. But I independent, think but independent. Independent, yeah. And I claim that there is no loss in the, it's, the, 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 the pictures here, it's not really canonical. And what claims that no loss of information if we change change a uh, number of classes or classes uh, uh, if you change this number of variables q uh, and change come all to classes uh, we will not lose any information so if we know in kind of one description these things we no, in another description. Yeah, in principle, uh, the maximal formation will choose this omega i will be linear and dependent, and uh, it will be more or less equivalent to all Gromfit invariants. But uh, I want to say that you have to choose a smaller number of classes. That's not a, a big deal. Yeah, for example, suppose we get a collection of classes with m greater than 2, and I just want to replace by just one class with m equal to 1, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Uh, wh what goes on? Mm. Uh, 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 in this class, I'll, I'll, I'll just declare de delta nu is omega two. Yeah. Now I have uh, more mo base base delta instead of omegas. Yeah. Mm. And have kind of like uh, new variables, new coordinates, t2 new, tm new. 
And um, uh, first of all, in the formula for the connection, I replace uh, 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 T will be log, uh, roughly logs of Q. Yeah, I, I make this uh, re replacement. But now what I do with term in a Q2 in, in uh, group between variants, uh, uh, by divisor axiom, I replace it by the following sum. It's replaced by some exponent of sum over from i equal to 2 to m ti integral uh, beta omega i. Uh, which are uh, mm, called kind of delta i nu, and uh, then its element is this, uh, then we get the form power series in T, and uh, uh, what really goes on here? We to consider coefficients of q1 to power certain number, uh, because it's simple divisor, we have only finitely many classes of curves. If you fix degree of curve respect to uh, omega 1, there are only finitely many things. And what we get here, we get a finite linear combination of exponents. And finite linear combination of exponents uh, embed uh, to mm, mm, form power series. Some with some kind of positive coefficient uh, ci ti ti nu, ti, uh, ti nu. Can you write the yeah. yeah, yeah, it will be easier. Yeah. Yeah, if you make this replacement q by exponent of t, this finite sums will be detected by their form, formal expression. Yeah, so uh, uh, finite sums. Ah, why finite uh, finite linear combinations? The story is the following: If you fix power of q, if you fix integral of uh, beta of q of omega one, then you get a finite number of possible betas. And they appear uh, in uh, other things when you replace q by exponent. And uh, so you don't lose any information, but of course, it will be kind of like hidden properties that it's, uh, the things are expressed in some of exponents. But in this quantum product, yeah. it seems to be sensitive to the choice of omega i, right? Because you have, let's say, m terms here, and now you have only one term, let's say. Yes, yes, yeah. I get kind of like different uh, versions. So you get a different quantum product. Yeah, I get different uh, different base depends on choice for my, my ample classes here. Uh, and um, so this quantum product is sensitive to the choice of omega i. Yes, yes, it's sensitive. Yeah. But I claim that for each of one, I can reconstruct any of. Would you write finite number of possible of 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 effective classes beta with given ah, okay. because okay. simple. Yeah, yeah, yes. So this is will be really. Important for me. Um, so how, um, what was all, what all those choices uh, mean roughly? Morally, 
Uh, I, I, uh, in the last lecture, I explained everything in the assumption that all things convergent, yeah? And uh, instead of uh, this ring, I parameterize quantum product by point in cohomology. And this uh, morally, this limit when this variable goes to zero uh, correspond to kind of limiting point of of homology of xc rough again kind of like in parentheses. Uh, namely, what you do, you consider sum of a uh, my uh, ample classes with weight minus infinity in second homology. Mm. Which part of all even homology? Because logarithm of zero is like minus infinity. Or uh, uh, absolute value, uh, uh, it's a real part of infinity. There are more general limiting points. When one can make expansion, again, there will be no loss of information, like in, in uh, 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 for such things. Uh, and this more general limiting points are uh, given by the following. We get, again, at least one uh, class in, let's see, show one x to up to homological equivalence. Uh, uh, with the following properties. The linearly independent over Q. The second, these guys are, will be not ample, but will be semi ample. It means that integral of any effective class is non negative instead of strictly positive. So that's the homological equivalence, right? So? Uh, homo uh, hom uh, hom homological equivalence, image in, in the realm homology, kind of neuron severity group, yeah, okay. Yeah. And uh, up to torsion, yeah. And, uh, and the next property is the following. If you remove epsilon to x, it will be positive for some epsilon small positive real number. So positive means ample? Or? Ample, yeah. A, a pairing with any effective class will be strictly positive. Uh, yeah, it will be bigger than, uh, uh, yeah, uh, after multiplication by, if it's, let's say, rational number, if you multiply by integer, you get class of ample class. Mm -hmm. So uh, is it the case that the pairing with every effective class is strictly positive is equivalent? I'm not sure, no. no. Because there, is, there are some numbers. No, 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 no. I, I mean ample. It's kind of like ample, yeah. Positive means ample, yeah. Okay. And, and this sort of think it will be a certain class. Mm. Mm. Certain class. Uh, uh, kind of uh, it's called gamma initial or whatever it's uh, or maybe gamma zero. Uh. Sorry, Maxim, is it supposed to be minus epsilon? Minus epsilon, yeah. Oh. Minus, yeah. Uh, the sign is very important, yeah. It's Uh, ah, we, we, we gain uh, extent to some graded basis of uh, of uh, graded basis of homology of x, yeah, uh, like in previous situation, and and now we add some uh, class, which is linear combination of uh, things. Uh, degree 
j is not equal to 2. Some linear combination of classes uh, uh, actually it should be in even cohomology of classes of degree 0, 4, 6, but not 2. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And my shifted linear point, shifted limiting point, is uh, again informally sum of minus infinity omega i plus this gamma zero. Okay, I'll write this. So in second cohomology group, I go to kind of like minus infinity direction and all h zero to four, I go to uh, some shifted point. Mm. Mm. Uh, and then, uh, uh, one can write the same formula, so the quantum product is parameterized by, uh, by O of B, where, where B is now uh, series invariable Q corresponding to uh, semi-ample classes, and we expand near Or maybe say it's kind of like Tg zero and zero. Uh, we extend mm, in difference uh, in the shifted point. Uh, so Tg zero, these are new variables. What are Tg zero? It's some elements of my field. Some or some fixed elements. Fix, fixed elements. Yeah, fixed elements. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so expand and kind of like shifted point, and uh, uh, what's the trouble? Uh, 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 kind of what potential will be trouble if you expand and shifted point? If you fix all degrees, all degrees integral of of beta omega j, omega i, which are negative numbers. You could have infinitely many possible because its class is not ample. Uh, you, uh, you get infinitely many uh, possible beaters, and uh, and uh, there is still another trouble if you are kind of like. Uh, um, Consider uh, some term in Taylor coefficients uh, uh, when of degree n. Uh, the terms are the following: you get m zero n for some n prime of x beta, which project to m And uh, what you should calculate to, to for your Taylor coefficients, you consider running arbitrary number of points when you put this uh, insertions. Mm. Uh, yeah, it will be essentially the same not notation which, which I use. I consider um, mm, pullback of fundamental class. Fundamental class on which I acts by what by uh, uh, um, product of of some of a uh, mm, mm, of my shifted points, uh, arbitrary many times. So, so, so there are kind of two problems, infinitely many bits and infinitely many n primes in this formula, if you want to calculate uh, Taylor coefficients. And what I claim that uh, because of this 
conditions, you get finite sum. many fundamental class and then you ah sorry sorry yeah mm. uh. Uh. of the player you are taking the fundamental class of the Fun you get fundamental class of of m0 n plus n prime yes. x beta and x by pullback by evaluation web of uh, such guy. Yeah, so kind of like, uh, 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 if you want to uh, write expansion shifted points, from this calcul all calculus follows that you kind of try to modify fundamental class by this uh, uh, sum of all mm, from Taylor formula by such. But it's only a rational map. It's not a, a globally defined map, right? Sorry, what is map? Stability is not now. No, 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 there is forgetting map. Yes, but the stability will not be preserved. No, no, there is always a map. You can forget stability and preserve and then you contract wrong components. No, but what, what, what is the role of the tensor for the formatoid yes. of sigma? It's element in, it's, it's element in, in, in cohomology of x to power n prime. Yeah. Then I can pull back on this guy. Yeah. So you pull back by evaluation map, because model space maps to m zero n. It also maps to x to power n prime. So anyway, you have okay. So you take the fundamental class of the modular space. Yeah. Product with this chow with this uh, element in chow. Yeah. Pull back. Yeah. And push back, push forward to get class on m zero n bar. And then I can also, uh, now I can pu push forward also to x to power n at the end of the day, and this will be Taylor key. So you pull back from x to n prime, times the parameter, and push, push to, to zero, uh, okay. Or maybe to x to power n, yeah, instead of here. Yeah. You take pull back and push forward, yeah. 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 And that's a proper morphism, so it's okay. Yeah. What Dr. was asking is what, what the role of the section, and you say that you use this to act on the M0 uh, on the left hand side, and then you still do push forward. Yes, yes, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, so you get kind of two sources of infinity. Uh, uh, yeah, and there are kind of two uh, observations. This unit axiom, yeah, which says that if you put class in H0, put class in H0, we get nothing outside uh, in B equals zero part. So, but in text, some uh, things we can uh, omit for bit, for bit in and equal to zero, we can omit uh, uh, component de in degree zero. Uh, so we can assume uh, that uh, uh, all classes uh, so we can pretend that all classes of have degrees at least four here and and now um, uh, now what what goes on uh, uh, let's remember recall this formula of a virtual dimension so what is delta j prime now? Delta j, delta j, no prime, sorry. Okay. Yeah. TIE, is that TIE or TJ? TJ, TJ, yeah. 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 Uh, we get formal for virtual dimension. Uh, and, um, mm, and the formula, uh, so virtual dimension should be equal to s s total commodity degree of classes which we integrate. 
and um, homogeneous classes, and virtual dimension uh, includes something. It's it will be if you fix all, all the rest, it will be two n prime plus integral of of beta, things which are kind of uh, n plus kind of constant uh, is equal to sum of degrees and then we'll be put, uh, again will be certain constant here because we put some classes in first n points and then add sum of a uh, Some of the degrees uh, of uh, uh, certain my classes appearing in, in this perturbation story, uh, and um, these are numbers greater than four. And here's for one to n prime. Mm. And uh, what follows is that again some constant plus sum of degrees delta jk minus 2 from 1 to n prime is equal to integral of first chain class. Uh, and then one can uh, use this property because omega 1 minus, uh, just the use just any of uh, commodal classes. Uh, uh, mm, mm, Maybe minus one number of first chain classes. Uh, positive. Sum of four to n prime degree of delta. Ah, uh, so, sorry, what, what I'm. Uh, 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 keep track. You consider. When you want to write expansion new points, you. Uh, uh, this, it will depend on, on the points of shifted uh, um, points, it's some kind of like a priori some form of power series. And you want to see that it's actually polynomial. Yeah. And if you consider any monomial, then it, uh, it appears only when you have uh, certain uh, coincidence of dimension. And here what is going on? Uh, from uh, this point you can uh, immediately see that uh, we have upper bound on uh, on this number. Get upper bound because integral of omega one uh, of the difference is positive, and integral of omega one is given. Uh, so it's you get upper bound. So it means that n prime is bounded. And uh, by similar reasons, you, you, you'll see that because of this, things is, is bit beta is bounded. Because if beta goes to infinity, then this, diff this things will go to infinity, and then you get again contradiction. Sorry? What, what is delta jk? No, the formula sum of one to n prime. Ah, delta jk, uh, if you consider any monomial, that correspond to some uh, uh, commodity classes in degree four and, uh, and so on, delta j. This variable tj correspond to delta j. So you are only taking those j for which the degree is at least four. At least four, yeah. For, for degree zero, for degree zero, they do not appear in the game at all, yeah, by a unit axiom, yeah. But you are taking it's all of those. All of them, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. Which, appear, which appear, yeah. And degree two doesn't appear. Do we degree two does not appear, yeah. Do we need to take some maximal set of omega or no, just no? The same, yeah. Yeah, so, so it should be formed by classes not in degree two. Yeah, that's, that's the main point here. Ah, Okay, and now, mm, yeah, so we get this uh, shifted, po shifted limiting po point where one can make the whole expression 
And now I want to say this formula is kind of like blob formula. Now I go to the final kind of picture. So I have to say that it's still hypothetical because one have to identify one thing with another. It's, uh, it's so something which we figured out about two years ago. Uh, uh, which is the following. If you have x smooth projective variety and contain z smooth closed subvariety of pure codimension r, which is list two, uh, then one we produce like two varieties. X prime will be blow up. And x double prime will be disjoint union. So it takes this uh, uh, two varieties, and in fact, cohomology group of them isomorphic as z two graded spaces. So there's some canonical isomorphism, and and again, like pick a line bundle, one can make s several, just one is sufficient. An ample line bundle. L on X. Mm. So in my story, this, this number of Q variables will be one. And then we take two limiting points, two limiting points. Uh, what will be for x prime? For x prime, I get again minus infinity and no correction in uh, degree non-zero non plus no correction in h not two. Uh, now that's kind of Fine situation. This this uh, pullback is uh, uh, pullback. This uh, this guy is semi ample, and uh, canonical class is um, minus essentially pullback of a canonical class and, and uh, uh, mm. uh, is minus infinity x bar. Ah, no. It means that I have one variable. So, so my 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 have omega one, which is pullback in this uh, generalized shifted points. I need uh, in this whole story, uh, I need a collection of uh, classes, linear independent. It will be just one class, yeah. pullback, and and the correction will be zero. Okay. Yeah, and then it satisfies all this property. Uh, fortunately. Uh, because this canonical class will be essentially the same as minus uh, exceptional divisors, and there is something called C-Shadri constant, which guarantees that this linear combination is ample. Uh, no, no, it's uh, it's it's informal description. Uh, I'll take uh, just one class omega one. Okay, if you want to write to be totally formal, I can do. I get m equal one. I get omega one will be pullback of uh, C one L uh, and uh, and gamma zero. Uh, this correction will be zero in this case. Uh, so it kind of makes sense to. Uh, Keep degree, uh, uh, keep degrees only with respect to pullback, and for x double prime, uh, again I have omega one will be the same pullback, which is already, which is already ample. This guy was semi-ample, 
and but this correction is really tricky. Uh, mm, mm, yeah, it's actually mm, what we work out uh, some explicit formal for this correction. It's some cohomology class. Uh, uh, mm, I will not. Some complicated explicit formula in terms of what? Uh, because X prime is a union of variety and uh, these divisors, uh, you, you can see the first ch consider um, polynomials of ch uh, 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 chain classes of normal bundle and uh, sitting in uh, a commodity of X, a commodity of Z, and their pullbacks. to x and on a pull push forwards and push forwards and of, poly of polynomials in this chain classes uh, yeah some quite tricky formula and I don't want really to explain but the reason was the following mm. as this formula appears kind of uh, uh, Naturally, mm, from the following. The normal bundle, what is n? Normal bundle. Yeah, So you get two formal manifolds, and both of them contains kind of like base point, yeah? Uh, when all variables q and t is equal to zero. Uh, it's formal power series at some base point. Uh, and uh, where is all this complicated formula, where they come from? Uh, and it's, it's uh, uh, called its limiting point, yeah? yeah. At the limiting point, uh, we consider mm, two, bu two bundles on on formal line with, with meromorphic connection uh, delta prime, delta prime uh, of, with pole of order 2 What is 0 in? Uh, there is a 0 point in, in, on, on all this um, when you have the situation with uh, shifted points, you still get variables q and t. My, my variety is algebra uh, spectrum for series of form power series. You put all variables zero, you get kind of like canonical base point, which you expand. And uh, in this limiting point, you should write these connections. And uh, connection in, uh, consider fiber, you'll, you'll be cohomology of x prime, which is cohomology of x double prime, uh, it will be trivial bundle, and the connection has um, uh, the following form. It will be d du minus u2 minus u prime or, or u double prime, depending on uh, one of choices, and one over grading u minus one, uh, some grading operator, which uh, 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 
what, how do you know it? It's something like degree minus Or the double prime minus, yeah, it's some some gradient operator. And in fact, they come from t in two uh, versions uh, because you have two different varieties and you shift by dimensions in different pieces. So it's you get two really different gradient operators, and this Euler field will be this quantum product. Uh, uh, so what happens for variety maybe x double prime? You use just usual cup product with this with this thing because uh, when q equal to zero, only degree zero curves survive. And for x prime. You do something. Uh, uh, what you do, you look on the curves, which have degree zero with respect to this pullback. And curves which have degree zero with respect to pullbacks are curves which are, uh, uh, stay in ex exceptional devices contract to a point. And uh, what happens? Fibers, you get exceptional divisor in x, x, x prime. X prime is blow up. Yeah. Contains some exceptional divisor of a blob, which which is mm, vibration over z with fiber p to r minus one. It's a um, mm, prioritization of normal bundle, uh, conormal bundle, and uh, on uh, normal bundle, yeah. And uh, uh, curves which play the role here will be only lines staying in the fiber. It turns out it will be either constant maps. Or only lines and curves of degree two and more do not play any role by dimension reasons, and you get some uh, some complicated formula for the connection. And what we try to do, we try to uh, find these shifted points in such way these connections are uh, conjugated. Uh, they are gauge equivalent, uh, and we wanted to write formula universally for all pairs of varieties, and that's the only one way to write it. Uh, but uh, the calculation was really quite non-trivial. Yeah, so we get a, a, a uh, so we get a gauge equivalent, get explicit gauge equivalence. Between whom and whom? Between two bundles of a formal line, when I consider uh, uh, some one quantum product, another quantum product. We have explicit gauge equivalence at the limiting point, and how we extend, uh, and then the conjecture, uh, uh, conjecture, b x prime and b x, uh, there exist. Uh, isomorphism uh, preserving uh, and and f bundles uh, mm, extending our uh, this explicit cause recurrence at the base point. Yeah, so that's our conjecture that you get after some change of coordinates, you get the same uh, objects. Mm, and uh, in fact, uh, one can analyze this extension. So this is a conjecture. It's a conjecture. Yeah, well, I, I'll say say what what's really goes on. What exists? Uh, Sorry. An isomorphism of of. Uh, oh, 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 yes, uh, yes, log of, uh, logarithmic of bundles. I have two logarithmic of bundles. Yet at some point, uh, at point zero. Uh, identify because bundle over point it's already a trivial thing it's kind of like actual bundle over line uh, in pl pl if bundle of point it's actual bundle over line mm. and this extension is uh, in fact canonically determined uh, uh, it, it's not only existence actually it's there existing it's automatically unique uh, by some mm, uh, following reason. 
Uh, and for this reason, I have to. So these two bundles are. I have two different bases. I can identify bases and identify bundles, yeah. Uh, uh, SF bundles, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we don't really need to disagree. Hmm. I maybe I just. Actually, there's some uh, interesting story here goes on. Mm. If you get a, let's say, a F bundle uh, on one of this variety, uh, log F bundle of a base which is isomorphic to uh, Spec formal of series in one variable Q, say, and many variables Tj. Uh, uh, I, I call a framing at base point is uh, a trivialization. Base point no B zero kind of which uh, is zero. Uh, it's a trivialization of H restricted B zero times the spectral form of U. A formal disk uh, said that uh, ah so sorry. A framing is a trivialization of this bundle. Uh, uh, sorry, sorry, I, I make the six. Such that my connection is uh, looks like this. And some operator. There's no terms of degree two. And uh, framing is not globally. Yeah, it's trivialization of bundle on on B on B cross the, the six. Yeah, in, in fact, it, uh, I can do it just for anything. If I get uh, a, a framing of, of any F bundle, when, when I uh, uh, multiply by spec formal of KFU, it's trivialization of, of my bundle here, uh, such that my connection looks like this, uh, if, if, you, if you, I'm in log case. And DTJ plus one over U something, and to apply U D D U, you get only two terms. Yeah, it's exactly what comes from ground fitting invariance. We, we don't have positive powers of U. And this framing can, uh, can be understood geometrically like this. It, it's, uh, geometrically, it's, it means that you extend your bundle Ex we extend my bundle to H2 base multiplied by P1 in variable U. And such a bundle become, will be trivial along P1 directions. And we'll have some uh, first order pole in. Uh, but I thought you took only one Q, Q1. Oh, no, it's, it's, it's for general, for uh, kind of for general stuff, you get maybe several Qs, it doesn't really matter, yeah. Okay. Yeah, uh, for, for this log, for log of bundles, if, uh, if I have log structure, 
Uh, I can make uh, say say what is this, what is this, what is the framing? Does the connection still extend to a connection? Hey, a connection will extend the connection will have first order pole at infinity and regular singularity. Ah. Yeah. First yeah. And you see, it's kind of like open property. And uh, there is a little uh, uh, question about Q things. Um, so, um, so there's very uh, kind of uh, easy theorem. It was some kind of like extension of framings. But it is a logarithmic connection. It's logarithmic connection, yeah. Yeah, so it is, doesn't extend to... Yeah, it has exactly this. You can formulate what it is. Then log geometry, but with... with yeah, it's, it's still poles in Q directions as well, yeah. And uh, let's, assume, let's apply it to our situation when we uh, suppose that uh, this B is, will be spec formal of some series in several Q's and several J's, and log structures will be given by Q, Q DQ and Q DT. This will be uh, logarithmic things. Suppose we get, uh, given a framing at q equals 0 and t, t equals 0, base point, and such that uh, this, uh, this operator is unimportant. Yeah, if there's no cover, there's no constraint, whatsoever, and then this extends canonically to all whole formal neighborhoods in uniquely. It's a unique way. Given a lim framing at one point, so I get just uh, uh, my vector bundle in one variable is written in this form. It's a limiting point. Uh, uh, sorry? I'm not sure that I maybe I ask you after, but what is a frame? Framing? Framing a trivialization of my bundle. Ah, okay, okay. Such that, oh, equivalent extension to P1 uh, with some property. In the framing at Q equals 0, T equals 0, you mean just trivialization at the uh, on the formal line in u variable, yeah. On the formal line in u variable, but without without any with, with this property, you get only two terms. Okay. So see, this is equivalent to the claim that extends to projective line. Yeah, it's it's one can formulate it uh, geometrically and see why it's extends canonically because it will be open property. If you if you no, know, you can you can this this formulas one can say geometrically, and then these things will be almost obvious, but but because you have a logarithmic form, uh, formula, there's some extra little condition. This is an important condition. One should really work kind of like step by step in, in um, power series. Yeah, OK, so that's. Um, and what, what go, goes on um, in, in this, our formulation, we make, we make two gauge equivalents between two guys. Uh, uh, at point zero, so we get like two framings. One can f formulate things uh, uniquely. Then by this extension extends uh, uh, to two framings in uh, in my bundle, and this eventually allows you to kind of identify mm, mm, to uh, to make this all conjecture, which was a bit like only existence, to make something really concrete. Uh, Mm. The reason is the following: If you get a framing of on some F bundle, then one can uh, uh, how can you use framing? Given framing and generator, maybe it's some base point in the fiber, a generator for the action. Um, mm. So what goes on? You using the action uh, on on generator. Uh, you, uh, you because you trivialize bundle. You trivialize bundle. It gives a trivial trivialization of H 
uh, of my, f f yeah, in, in general, if I consider this F, F bundle, yeah, and some base point, yeah, and, and if I choose a generator, then I get trivialization of logarithmic tangent bundle to be base. base. The generator for the cyclic module. For the cyclic module, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Then you identify uh, this fiber which are trivialized with tangent log tangent bundle, so trivialized logarithmic tangent bundle. And if you trivialize logarithmic tangent bundle, you get kind of like coordinates maybe up to shift, and then it, it gives a kind of unique way to write things, and then you get certain uh, formula which can can be feed in to computer or whatever, yeah, so it, it gives a really concrete way to... Sorry? Was the generator just at a given point and then it, you trivialize at a given point? Or no, but my bundle is already trivial. If my frame model is trivialized, then at every point I get a generator by trivialization. Ah, uh, every form, but okay. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah, so it gets something uh, mm, pretty concrete. Uh, which eventually can be tr transformed to some computer program uh, with form power series. One can, and then one can calculate cohomology, ground fit invariance of blow-ups or cohomology of, uh, uh, and then uh, the six is really very concrete. You can kind of like an algorithm, <coughs> reproducing ground fit invariance of the blow-up via those. For x and z, and, uh, and and the chain classes of normal bundle, and maybe inclusion map, something like this. Yeah. But can you repeat the con the conjecture in the meantime while we wait? Just so, sorry. Ah, no. The conjecture <coughs> was uh, mm. uh, we have two uh, two formal uh, 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 bundles here, yeah? and at the base point we identify them. Yeah. And the conjecture, the, the this identification ex extends to everywhere, okay. but uh, uh, we didn't f formulate how, uh, what is nonlinear map, okay. but nonlinear map, it can be, can be read, re uh, read from this story uniquely. Okay. Up, up to certain, uh, and, and the quantum product the structure of these bundles, it's also, I mean... Yeah, as it goes to its, uh, yeah, the product will be coincide here, because it's unique, it's intrinsic for F-bundle. Ah, okay, so, um, yeah. yeah. So this kind of thing is where this uh, connection is yeah. really helping you. Yes, yes, yes. Not ju uh, just with this uh, bundle, it will be really hard to uh, make identification. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the, the colors is really a certain way to r calculate things from through another. In fact, it was known for many, many years. It's there was a work by Hu Li Ruan in uh, Hu Li Ruan already proved it in like 15 years ago. Uh, that that one can uh, reconstruct something from another, but uh, they use something more complicated called relative ground fit invariance, and it's uh, we actually st we tried for about one year to, to use the things. It's, it's it was really nightmare, so we gave up. Yeah. Uh, uh, so um, uh, so in fact, why believe in this conjecture? In now I go to this decomposition theorem. In this limiting point, this uh, uh, eigenvalues of Euler operator will be zero and roots of one. And here we get cohomology of z, and here we get cohomology of x. So they, they you can put them in little disks. Ah, uh, just uh, before going on, uh, what are little disks? Yeah, this was all for formal power series. And there is a really stupid. Form, from formal one can go to non-Archimedean. You introduce some stupid field, I don't know, something like u, with some dummy variable. And you can see the points uh, pass when all this passes goes to zero in both in QNT direction. And then you get, f for free, get non-Archimedean variety. And then one can speak about disks and, and so on. Mm. And then from this disk picture, if you return to this decomposition theorem, you see that this, uh, this F bundle for a blow-up is decomposed of products things, which have the same size of homology of X, and by the universal formula, there will be certain modification of the things. And my, my guess is in this story, there's really no room to make universal modification by this Frobenius, whatever, F bundle. 
using this little data, like some few classes and uh, maps to Komolder of other variety, there's really no room to do it. It will be kind of like intrinsic proof. But uh, I have to say that it's not yet uh, proven. So what we have right now, a result of Iritani. Uh, Iritani, uh, he used some language of given talcons, some infinite dimension things, and there are some form power series, and that's really kind of very hard to unwind things. Uh, uh, now his result using kind of like usual tools in whole stories. There's some some using uh, like given tile started using equivariant group of invariants. There was a kind of well understood strategy, and here he has some uh, things about the limiting points. I can see in his proof, but uh, his proof is so non-explicit. Uh, so, so directly we cannot really identify one thing with another, but we expect it it will be the same uh, stuff because. Um, it's, it's, it can be, <laughs> can be anything else. Yeah, so I, mm, uh, I will not sp speak about irritant proof. I don't really understand it in the whole details. It was based on some ideas of uh, Telemann about JIT theory. Uh, yes, yeah, so, so strictly speaking, some uh, kind of uh, uh, clean up should be done. Uh, uh, b because here we got very, we have something very very concrete, and for his story, one should really keep track on adic con radius of adic convergence, and it wasn't really properly done, and uh, yeah, so it's uh, a little bit uh, uh, of the mess. And this language of bundles was kind of a replacement, f a rigorous replacement for all the things which he uh, kind of mastered. It re rigidifies the situation, the F bundle. Yeah, yeah, I think it's, it's I think it's all can be, uh, all his proof can be rewritten and uh, step by step, it's, it's, it's no, no trouble, but, but strictly speaking it's not done and... Uh, Which proof are you talking about? Uh, uh, no, Eritani has this, uh, in the summer has a uh, um, uh, paper on archive, I think it's completely okay, but one should kind of really turn your mind to read it. Uh, he speaks about some formal series, he has some kind of really N n nasty rings, uh, 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 roughly one have some kind of like maybe two variables. You get things like this, and here uh, he don't don't care about uh, kind of compare powers here and powers here. Uh, yeah, so it's uh, in fact should be some linear bound which uh, he never specified. Yeah, so uh, and and then at some point, for example, if you make the sum. You understand, you understand ex exponent of complex numbers uh, as uh, 1 plus x plus x square to uh, so when x is a complex numbers, not in this ring, you use kind of Archimedean topology for some coefficients. Yeah, yeah so it's some kind of really um, have to <laughs> clean out what is going on. But it's uh, at the end of the day, a very nice formula, some gamma functions and some interesting stuff here. Yeah, so I think I'll stop for today and uh, this. Uh, applications of variational geometry, which I wanted to finish for today, maybe I'll postpone to the next lecture, unfortunately, yeah. So the next lecture will be on... The uh, next lecture will be not on Monday, but will be on Tuesday, exceptionally. Because Monday this uh, auditorium will be f filled by uh, some ethics on seminar about matrix models and something like that. Okay.